Hey, what's up everybody and welcome back to Drums and Drams. My name is Cameron and today we're gonna be taking a look at a brand new release coming out of Chattanooga, Tennessee. This is Chattanooga Whiskey's Port Cask Finish. I've got to say, I am so excited about today's review, and that is because I have always had a soft spot for port cask finished whiskey of any kind, right? My gateway into really kind of developing my whiskey palette was, for better or worse, through Lafroig 10, <laughs> the, the smokiest, most medicinal tasting Band-Aid scotch on the planet. But shortly after, I found my way into the Glenmorangie line, and their port finished... Um, Quinta Ruban is just an absolutely incredible sort of mainstay offering from any of the sort of big scotch distilleries, and it comes in at a great price point. Well, that port cask finished scotch, um, after exploring many other scotches after that, led me to Angel's Envy when I really started getting into bourbon, you know, at, at the very beginning. And I enjoyed Angel's Envy quite a bit, but I still felt like there wasn't a great port finished bourbon that I had tried that really kind of rocked my world. You know, I, I haven't admittedly had any of like the haystack needle port finishes or anything like that with really old whiskey finished in port barrels. I would love, I would love to try those, right? But um, I haven't had the good fortune of having any of those to this point. And most of the time when you find port finished uh, whiskey or bourbon in particular, you're looking at a really young spirit that just honestly they're just trying to mask with this with this finish um that happens with port it happens with sherry with all other types of finishing and i'm kind of getting you know tired of trying all of this young whiskey that just needs a few more years to come into its own before you put it in that finishing cask when chattanooga whiskey announced that they were coming out with this port finish uh, i was really excited now i know that chattanooga's products are typically very young around that like three or four year mark but you know, I reviewed their 111, and that is one heck of a whiskey at a very good price with good availability, at least here in Ohio. I was completely blown away. I mean, I think that 111 is by itself a great whiskey, but give it a few more years. And if we start seeing some more aged expressions coming from Chattanooga whiskey, I mean, that's going to be a force to be reckoned with. I love what they are doing. I love the grains that they're using the story, everything is so, so cool. So when I heard about the port cask finish, I was like, yes, that is going to be something that I have to pick up. And thankfully, Sealbox uh, ships to Ohio and I was able to grab a bottle of this. So let's run down this bottle very quickly, talk about the stats here, and then we're gonna get into the nosing and tasting. As you can see, um, I have only had two pours of this to this point. I have no notes written down. Um, I think sometimes it's great to have notes for these full reviews, and sometimes I want to go into it with a little bit of experience with the whiskey, but but honestly kind of getting more of that first impression vibe. And I think that's going to be more beneficial here because I don't want to have preconceptions about this. You know, I don't want to have talking points that I, I'm making sure to hit. I want to give you my full and honest opinion of this, and I think that's the best way to do this one. So we have a 95 proof, uh, Tawny Port Finished, um, whiskey here from Chattanooga Whiskey. 95 proof, a great drinkable everyday proof. It's not cask strength. Yeah, that might be great, but I'm curious to see, you know, how this, how this smells, how it tastes, and whether or not this was a great proof to bottle it at. The mash bill is crazy. <laughs> there are a series of letters and numbers here um, on the mash bill like B001, B005, SB055, you get the picture. There are six groupings. The last groupings are like six digits long. I don't know what these mean. I just know that they have blended a bunch of different mash bills here. And they say that each of those mash bills contain at least 25% specialty malted grains. And they are known for this. They're known for their um, different types of barley, different types of malted rye, all of those things that they're using. Um, and they do so well in their other products that I can't imagine that it's a bad choice here. Gives you the cooperage here. This is non-chill filtered, which is amazing, especially 
For a lower proof product to be non-chill filtered, kudos to Chattanooga Whiskey. Finish Tawny Port Barrels. Now here we go with the age. <laughs> Both of these are kind of funny. The age of the whiskey, greater than three years. The finishing time, greater than six months. So you could just add a day onto those and that might be it. I don't care. Um, I think it's kind of a funny way to put it, but that's that's fine. So three years at least, and at least six months in the port cask, which is a good amount of time in a port cask. Batch size, six to seven barrels here. Um, so this is not like their Apricot Brandy series, which has the experimental single batch um, notification or classification rather on the label. This one looks like it's going to be a mainstay offering. I mean, I think the barrel finishing series they are planning on kind of keeping around so that's an exciting bit of information there and uh, of course i love the bottle love the label all that kind of stuff but the important part at least three years at least six months finished 95 proof non-chill filtered so let's go ahead and get into this whiskey and see what we get here this has been sitting out for about i don't know 10 15 minutes at this point getting a little bit of air so here we go on the nose with this chattanooga port cask finish Okay, so right away, you're hit with the those distinct wine-finished notes that you get on a lot of these bourbons. This comes across as a mixture of wine sweet, which is not necessarily like um, candy. You know, it's like that distinct sort of sweetness that you get. But it also comes across as dry and sort of um, tart in a way. Yeah, in terms of the actual base bourbon here, on the nose... You can tell that it's there structurally underneath all of the, the wine characteristics or the port, I should start saying port, all of those port characteristics. You can tell it's there, but it's not that obvious <laughs> that it's a bourbon um, in the first two, uh, you know, smells here. Yeah, I mean, you're getting like blackberries, you're getting those jammy notes in here, a little bit of Honestly, like there, there are a couple of like sherried type notes in here, like that raisin thing, that dry, almost bitter raisin note that you get on sherry finished whiskeys. Yeah, there is some caramel there. You can you can start to pick out some caramel in the background, but you really have to dig beneath the port finish. I'm getting a little worried that the port finish is going to overtake this whiskey. On the nose, it has. I mean, it this is very port driven, very port forward. But the sweetness here is different. It's it's kind of kept in check with the tartness that's also along for the ride. So let me just take a sip. We'll get into it. We'll come back to the nose and see what happens. Mm. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Okay. Amazing amount of spice in this whiskey. Oh, yeah. I mean, I've got to imagine there's a good bit of rye in here with the combination of those mash bills. That spice rush develops so consistently throughout the entire, you know, experience on the palate. Angel's Envy is much flatter than this. I know it's a lower proof. What is it, 86.6 or something? Much flatter than this. This just crescendos the entire time. And it makes a lot of sense that they would want to use a spicier whiskey um, for this port finish. Because, again, when you throw these things into wine barrels especially if you're going to do it for greater than six months, as they say on the label, you have the, you have the, or you run the risk is what I should say of just annihilating the whiskey underneath. Um, and especially younger whiskey, which tends to, you know, not fare as well for long finishing periods. The fact that they've used a spicier, what I would assume is a rye forward combination of the mash bill allows this thing to stand up to that port finish in a very, very good way. Yep, and then you come back to the nose here, and now that you've had a first sip, you're starting to get into that bourbon profile a little bit. That grain-forward characteristic that you get on um, the 111 from Chattanooga, those grains, which is sort of a sharper, um, somewhat nutty, but not like Jim Beam peanut thing. It's, it's like that bran or that grain forward characteristic, you're starting to really kind of dig into that now that your palate and everything is acclimated. Yeah, and it's it's sweetening up. The bourbon is now allowing this to 
have more of a bourbon sweetness as opposed to a wine finished sweetness. And so that bourbon sweetness is now combining with the tart elements of the port cask in a very, very good way. It's you're, you're getting a nice balance now on the nose. Whereas in the beginning, it was so port heavy that I was a little bit scared about how this thing would taste. So let's do a second sip now. Wow. Wow. I mean, this is what so many craft distilleries who are doing wine finished whiskeys at this point, this is what they're striving for. For as worried as I was in the beginning is very excellently balanced. I'm telling you what, like, I, I can't believe that this is a $45 bottle that I just ordered online and had shipped to my door. <laughs> I cannot believe it. I mean, this is incredible. And on the finish now, that spice, that ramping up of that black pepper spice on the palate, it lingers so well. The tartness combines with a little bit of oak on the back end now to be just drying enough. It, it lingers just enough. And it's just, yeah, I, I, I am a humongous fan of this whiskey. <laughs> I'm getting giddy, you know, I'm getting some goosebumps just talking about it. This is incredible. I love it. I mean, I love that, like, people talk about some Fruity Pebbles notes that they get on um, some of the Chattanooga stuff. I am starting to get that a little bit now on the nose, especially as I get into a couple more sips. The grain sweetness, the bran, the wine finish, that blackberry fig raisin jam, those, those notes are now all combining to just be exceptionally fruity and sweet and delicious. And, uh, and a little bit of that Fruity Pebbles thing is going on. All right, last sip. There's even some dark chocolate on the nose here, or on the palate rather. This is an excellent whiskey. I cannot recommend this enough at the price point of $45. That's cheaper than Angel's Envy in Ohio, and this is worlds better. You're going to be scared when you smell it at first. It smells like a port bomb, like the High Bank Midnight Cask for those of us in Columbus, Ohio. The Midnight Cask um, from High Bank is a blend of port and whiskey. And that thing is disgustingly sweet. Not good. You know, great experiment, good to get people into whiskey, I guess. For anybody who's serious about this, no, it's not happening. On the nose, this was taking me down that road and I was I was scared, but after after one sip back to the nose, second sip back to the nose, absolutely incredible. I can't say enough about this. I, I'm gonna have to I'm just gonna have to end the video now. It is everything that I wanted it to be. I wish the nose was slightly more balanced up front, but give it a chance, give it a second sip. You're really going to enjoy this. Um, highly, highly recommend. And I hope Chattanooga keeps this around as like an, you know, a, a mainstay release. I hope this thing hits shelves all the time and gets wider distribution um, because it is absolutely incredible. So that's all I have for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, drop a like below, hit the subscribe button and the bell notification to find out when new content is coming out and when I'm going live, which is at least once a week. Um, if you have watched a few Drums and Drams videos and you enjoy things and you want a little more behind the scenes access, you want a say in what we're doing with the channel and you want to join the community, I do have a Patreon page. You can find the link in the description below. So check that out and see if there are any of the tiers that are right for you. Um, and if you can't, I completely understand. Again, can't say enough about this Chattanooga port cask finish. Absolutely incredible. I'm going to end this video with my final sip here. So cheers to all of you, and I'll see you next time on Drums and Drams.